bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Psalm 119 verses 73 to 88. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in very faithfulness you cause me to be troubled. Let your faithful love be my comfort according to your promise to your servants. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be put to shame, for they wrung me with lies, but I meditate on your commandments. Let those who fear you turn to me, even those who know your testimonies. Let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. My soul is pining for your salvation, I have hoped in your word. My eyes fail with watching for your word, while I say, Oh, when will you comfort me? I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your servant? When will you bring judgment on those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me in defiance of your law. All your commandments are true. Help me, for they persecute me with falsehood. They had almost made an end to me on earth, but I have not forsaken your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness, so I shall keep the testimonies of your lips. Psalm 119, the psalm about God's faithfulness uh, through his word, the psalm that in almost every verse talks about God's word, his promises, his statutes, his law, those things. It says this, that in very faithfulness you cause me to be troubled. Troubles come into our life and we can bemoan them and of course we do and, and we protest against them. Sometimes when I'm bringing up my children I have to say to them, look the thing I'm doing now you won't like, you'll not enjoy it, you'll think of it as a bad thing that I'm doing. But later in your life when you look back you see the way I was training you and the way I was bringing you up and the way I was helping you. So I may be sending you to bed at a time you don't want to go to bed, I may be teaching you to do your homework, something that you don't enjoy doing but is for your good. Faithfulness as a father causes me sometimes to do things uh, with my children or get my children to, uh, to do homework and other activities that they don't enjoy because it will be good for them in the end. In faithfulness, faithfulness to, uh, to being our father, God does work in our life that causes us at the time to be troubled and to feel like we're going through hard and difficult times. But he does those things in our life through his faithfulness, his faithfulness to being our Heavenly Father, that in eternity we may appreciate the things that he's brought us through. Jonah chapter 2 Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and in the, the, and the float surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then, I said, I am driven away from your sight. Oh, shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me, and the deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever, yet you brought my life from the pit. O oh Lord my God, my life was ebbing away. I remembered the law, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty. but. I I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. Jonah calls to the Lord from the belly of the fish, and uh, says, what I have vowed I will pay, deliverance belongs to the Lord. Sometimes when we're in the belly of the fish, we need to acknowledge there's nothing we can do. 
We can promise to God that we will make good the vows that we have made. But in the end we acknowledge deliverance belongs to the Lord. Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of kings of the earth. To him who loves us, and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom of priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother, who share with you in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance, was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice, like a trumpet, saying, Writing a book, what you see, and send it to the seven churches. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and on turning I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the candlesticks I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and a golden slash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sh sun shining with full force. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead. And see, I am alive forever and ever. I have the keys of death and of Hades. No right what you have seen, what is and what is to take place after this. For the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, and the seven, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. These things must soon take place. Lord, we pray that we will be found faithful on that day when all see the coming of the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Lord, we pray that as the nations of the world wail before him, we will rejoice with our soon coming King. Almighty God, you called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who was lifted up on the cross, and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.